Hello everybody. Today we are going to be solving a MOSFET problem. The problem and the formula sheet are listed in the description. You can open them and have a look. I assume that you know the basics of uh, circuit theory and you know to, how to deal with the MOSFET. I'm gonna today I'm gonna uh, do an AC analysis on a MOSFET that has capacitors and uh, an AC source. We're gonna identify if it's a common emitter, common drain, common gate, and then we're gonna uh, define, like design and choose the specs for the, for the circuit based on criteria we already have. The problem is in the description. I encourage you to look at it before you look at me solving it so that you know what I'm solving. And you have here as, um, some formulas. G is the gain of the circuit which is V output over V input, and GM is a constant. You have the overdrive voltage, VOV, which is VGS minus VT. VT is a constant as well. Notice that I'm using capital letters. When you use capital letters, that means you're dealing with a DC component. When you use small letters like this, that means you're dealing with an AC component. And when you mix them up, like a capital V and a small g, that means it's a mixed component. We're gonna have to. We're gonna see that in the, at the end. All right. So, if you're looking at the question, part one. Identify what what kind of circuit it is. All right. It is a common source. And how do I know? Because the input is applied at the gate and the output is at the drain. A common source has the input applied at the gate and the output at the drain, so it's a common source. A common drain, the input is applied at the gate and the output at the source. A common gate circuit, the input at the source and the output at the drain. Alright? Because the input is at the gate and the output at the drain, it's a common source. Alright, that's part one. Awesome. Part two. We're going to have to do a DC analysis. We're given the ID, which is the current of the drain, and we, which is 1 milliamps. And we ha we're going to have to find the RS so that the overdrive voltage and the ID are equal to the specs that we're given. OK? So how are we going to do this? First, we're going to do a DC analysis, meaning all the capacitors will be uh, shorted and all the AC power sources will be so shorted as well. So it's gonna be like this. Our circuit's gonna be something like this. Our signal. This is our MOSFET. RS, 2.5 volts. negative 2.5 volts and RD. Now since this is a short circuit, no current goes from here. And the same thing with the RD, but I'm not gonna draw it again. Okay, this is a source, this is a drain, this is a gate. Okay? Now we can see better. Okay, now there is no current that goes here because this is basically an open circuit. And this is grounded, so Vg is equal to zero. We can say that right off the bat. That's good. Now we're gonna have to find a value for Rs. From doing a KCL here, we know that the voltage 2.5 minus the voltage right after, which is Vs over Rs is equal to the I we need, the current, IS. IS and ID are equal. However, the voltages between this node and this node are not equal. This is one of the proper properties of the MOSFET. IS is equal to ID, all right? Now we have this. But how are we gonna find uh, VS? We know we have been given that the, the overdrive voltage is 0.3. And we know that VGS minus VT is equal to VOV, which is overdrive. Since 
the ground is zero, so we're gonna do zero minus v s uh, ground is gate minus minus one equal to zero point three. Now the v s is equal to one point three volts. Awesome, we got it. And we have the i s, which is equal to the i d, which is one milliamperes, right? Now, if we substitute everything into this equation, we should get that Vs is equal to 1.3 volts. Awesome. Okay. Now, mm, we already got, yeah, we got confused, we already found Vs. If we sub everything into this equation, Rs should be 1.2 kilo ohms. All right, all right. So I went ahead and drew the AC circuit. This is for part three. I drew the AC circuit right here. You're gonna short the capacitor and short all the DC sources. Okay, and uh, this is the equivalent model. This is equal to this. Uh, this is a dependent current source, VGS times GM. This is the RS right here is grounded and this is because the capacitor is short it's also grounded so basically this um, this resistor is equal to zero because you are grounding uh, you are shorting a wire right next to it so no current is gonna flow here is exactly like this the current is not gonna go through the resistor it will go to the path of least resistance the current will go like this and the current here will equal to zero. All the current will go through the short wire, okay? A similar situation is happening here, so RS has no current. Basically, I could just not draw it, but I drew it anyways to show you guys. And uh, the RD is grounded too, because we grounded the uh, DC voltage source. All right, so now for part three, we have to select uh, a value so that the gain is negative 10. We know that the gain is equal to V out over V input. And we know that the output is right here, positive, negative. So the voltage or on the RD, V out, is going to equal to negative GM. It's negative. I'll tell you why in a second. VGS times rd that's just ohm's law the current right here is uh, equal to the times the resistance is equal to the voltage now why is it negative because the current usually goes to the ground right okay so the current should go through the resistor onto the ground however this doesn't support it this current goes to the opposite direction it doesn't go to this ground it goes to this ground so when you must it goes against the definition positive negative it goes like this up so it's a negative current i hope that explained it well all right awesome now this is the v signal or the v input and this is our signal this is g and this is s since it's grounded here and it's and it's open circuit right here that means that the voltage drop across this resistor is zero. So V signal is equal to VGS. This, these are the same basically because no current drop, no voltage drop is happening here. So I can just say VO equal to negative GM, V signal, RT, V output over V input equal to negative GM, RT. Hey, we had this, it's a given, right? We know this. So we say, negative 10 equal to negative gm rd awesome and we have a formula for the gm remember from last part gm is this 2id over vov the overdrive voltage we're gonna use that negative 10 equal to negative 2id over VOV RD 
if we do the math, we already have the ID is given in the problem, and VOV is also given in the problem, so RD is equal to 1.5 kilo ohms. Awesome. Now, that's number three. Now for number four. I know it's getting a bit messy, but if you are watching the tutorial from the start, you should be able to follow up. All right, for number four, we have to, uh, we have to find, hmm, we have to find the maximum value for VP so that it remains in saturation mode. We don't want it to go out from saturation mode. Okay, so if you look up at the formula, look at the formula sheet that I have provided, for the PMOS, for it to be in saturation, we have two conditions that need to be fulfilled. VGS has to be less than V Tabena. Oh, that's for triode, but it still, still stands. And VDS is less than VGS minus V Tab. V Tab is just the VT. You're gonna have to fulfill both of these two conditions. So we're gonna start with condition one. We have we found this in the fir at first, right? So and we know that this is uh, the VG is the V input. Actually, no, I. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is, yeah. So it's gonna be V signal minus V S. This VG is the input you know here the difference between them and since this is basically a short to the ground this is ground so VG is equal to VGS VG is equal to VGS all right which is equal to VG which is equal to V signal all right awesome so V signal minus VS should be like this we have this from the last part equal to negative 1.3. So when you throw that away here, the V signal should be less than 0 0.3. All right, that's one bound we have. Now to do the second condition, that's one condition, the second condition. For the second condition, we're gonna have to find VD first. So VD, I'm gonna do a quick KCL right here. Or RD, we have the RD already equal to one milliamps. So VD equal to negative one volts. Okay, we found the VD, awesome. Now, this is both, uh, it's V and this is supposed to be small. So it's gonna be V capital D plus V small D minus VS. VGS minus VT, all right? So it's gonna be negative one, negative 10, V signal, because you're multiplying by 10, because of the gain. V signal, negative 1.3, plus one. So all in all, V signal is equal to negative, no, it's greater than negative 0 0.82. Now, your V signal has to be within this constraint, right? It has to be greater than this, but less than this, right? Now, since it's a sinusoid, you, you go with the lowest value. Because if it's 0 0.3 right here, so the negative is gonna be 0 0.3 as well. That's too big, that's too small for this, it can't be. But if it's 0 0.18 here and 0 0.18 here, you have done the condition, so this is your V signal, this is the value you have to get. So uh, that's the solution for you. I assume you're a little bit confused now, why, is, why did I put uh, 10? Why did I put a 10 right here? Why is it 10 negative V signal? I'll show you right now. Because it's V output over V input equal negative 10, right? So V out equal to negative 10, V in, and V in is V signal, all right? 
and uh, you account for it because for that part it's VD plus VD. This is the AC component, this is the DC component. You have to take to account the AC component. Alright, so the final answer is Vmax equal to 0 0.182 volts. Amazing. Alright, we're done. If you guys have any questions, just shoot them my way. Good luck and I'll see you later.